Hi, thanks for tuning in again this week. We're going to take a look at a really well-known story about a paralytic man whose friends lower him through a roof and uh, because there wasn't enough space for them to get through in the house where Jesus was teaching. So, um, and then when he gets there, he gets inside, Jesus, rather than healing him, forgives his sin and then ends up healing him. So, um, I took a look at several aspects of this story and, um, I also watched a really great sermon that I linked in here, and I highly recommend taking the 30 minutes or so to watch it. I really liked it. So um, one of the things that he, um, that the pastor goes over, talks about in the sermon that I actually maybe um, don't totally I don't disagree, but I don't also completely agree is um, he said that uh, he, Jesus or God in no other context, does God forgive someone's sins without them asking? So, um, so he said that this pastor says that Jesus must have perceived some internal request. So in the same story, he perceives what the Pharisees are thinking. He, um, they're thinking he can't forgive sins. He's not God. And Jesus says, I know what you're thinking. And, um, to prove to you that I am God and that I can forgive sins, I'll also heal him too. But healing is easier than forgiving sins. So, um, and which is totally true. I'm going to sidebar for a second, um, that, God can heal out of hand. He can heal whenever he wants. Based on the system of justice that he has set up on earth and created, he cannot forgive without some sacrifice. So Jesus had to be the atoning sacrifice for sin, which made it far more difficult to forgive sin. Jesus foreknew that he was going to be that sacrifice and that sin was going to be able to be forgiven, but um, much more difficult to forgive sin than to heal. But um, that being said, going back to that idea that he perceived some, some unspoken request on the part of the paralytic man, um, all the accounts here say that when Jesus saw the faith of the men, he forgave the man his sins. So I... Um, drew some kind of logic statements here that, um, that to me kind of demonstrate that faith can't, faith and repentance can't coexist, can't not coexist. Okay. So that was really complicated. Um, but they have to go together. One, they can't be separated from one another. Um, and it's, I don't want to give myself too much credit here, but it's a little bit of a complex thought process that I don't necessarily want to detail in the video. So I encourage you to read it and give it some thought yourself. But um, even John the Baptist said, repent for the kingdom, at hand, a kingdom is at hand. Um, so why would the nearness of the kingdom inspire people to repent? Because it was, it, it necessarily causes repentance if they have faith that the kingdom is there. So um, anyway, take a look at it. I hope you uh, follow what I'm saying in writing rather than the blubbering of my lips right now. But um, I just look at it and see, see what you think. Thanks a lot.